Right. Good morning. Hello. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, today we are jumping into our next unit in uh, our next lesson in sequences and series. So um, right now we know what a sequence is. We've learned what infinite series are, which led into a power series. So we've already done day one of power series and understanding what a power series is. Today is going to be about representing functions as power series. So how to represent functions as power series, specifically using the first derivative or the integral of f. So we're going to bring back integration and integrals to help us convert functions into power series. So remember that f of x equaling the summation n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the n. This is a power series. If it expands, it becomes an infinite polynomial. Okay. We know that it also converges. Um, if, if it's centered at, at a, that it converges um, uh, x minus a absolute value less than r. So we, we've talked about this a couple times. Today, we are going to take some form that looks like 1 over 1 minus some quantity. Okay, and, the, and the goal is to take this quantity and convert it into a power series. n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x minus a to the n. And we've already talked about how a power series all right, can be represented as 1 over 1 minus a quantity within the um, interval of convergence, because that idea with um, uh, geometric series and how they converge to a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So the idea is that we're going to be able to take some function in this form and use that, that identity, even though this is just nothing more than an ID, and substitute it into a power series. Okay. So for instance, if I had... Um, 1 over 1 minus 4x. Okay. How this converts, this is going to be the summation n equals 0 to infinity of, remember this is the quantity that's going into this, into this power series. So that's 4x to the nth power. Which, if you want it to kind of look like this form up here, remember that the n can distribute and you have the summation n equals 0 to infinity of 4 to the n times x to the n, right? This is my c sub n right here. This is my actual power series, okay? So that's kind of what we're doing today. Now, we, we've already done this kind of idea in our last lesson, but today we're going to do a, a little bit of a, a, a trick to help us with certain types of functions, okay? So, let's look at this example here. It says, since partial sums are polynomials, since partial sums are polynomials, we can use calculus on the power series to find more functions that can be represented by a power series. So because, I mean, like, look, the, these summations are, are nothing more than polynomials, we're able to take the derivatives and integrals of polynomials. It's going to be the same concept. So remember, my goal, what I want, is I want to take something in the form of this right here, something in the form of this right here, and churn it into a power series, right? I want to churn it into something that is n equals 0 to infinity of that parentheses to the nth power. Okay, distribute the n, you know, make it look nice. Okay, so in, in, in A, I got 1 over 1 minus x. It's not quite in this form. It's close, okay? If that squared wasn't there, that would be 1 over 1 minus x, which is the generic identity for power series. But that squared is kind of changing things up. Well, how can I, how can I rewrite this to where it's not squared? Okay. The idea is that how I got that squared, how I got that squared is I took the derivative of something in this form to get to this form right here. Let me, let me explain. Like, like if I were to uh, say integrate 1 over 1 minus x squared, okay, 
If I were to do a little bit of U substitution here, just to show this this real quick, all right, du would be a negative dx. Okay, so we pretty much have the integral with a negative one on the outside of a one over u squared or u to the negative second du, and the integration of that is negative. Um, that has to be negative one, so it'd be negative one u to the negative first or u on the bottom. Okay. Which ends up being uh, negative times a negative is positive, 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so, so the integration of this ends up being this. That was nothing new. We, we know how to integrate. And this is in the correct form of something that I need to be able to put into the power series. So what does that mean? Okay, that means that if I were to take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, okay, if I were to take this derivative, I am going to be back to where I started, right? The derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So all I'm doing is I just rewrote the quantity from the beginning as the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. It's kind of an ID here. If you have like, like you know, a number or, or you have something over like 1 minus something squared, okay, you are able to integrate to get to a form that we can do the power series of. So what I'm saying is you're able to represent this original equation as the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Those two are equivalent. I can't stress that enough. And if you really want to verify, I mean, if I take the derivative of this, that would just be the same thing as taking the derivative of 1 minus x to the negative first. Doing power rule it would be negative 1 minus x to the negative second times negative 1 by chain rule. And we would end up having 1 over 1 minus x squared. So it does take me back to where I started. So all I'm doing is I'm rewriting that quantity from the beginning just with something it's equivalent to. Okay. So what I'm saying is, let me go back up here. I'm going to kind of draw a squiggly line right here. That taking the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is the same thing. So if I can find this power series, it's the same thing as finding the power series from the beginning, right? So this quantity that I'm taking the derivative of is something that I can I can write as a power series. This will be equivalent to the derivative of the power series, 1 over 1 minus x, right? And we know that that is the same thing as the summation n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Okay? So... I couldn't write a power series for 1 over 1 minus x squared, so I recognize that, that, state, that this quantity is the same thing as taking the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, and I can represent 1 over 1 minus x as a power series, so, so the power series that represents this whole thing is the derivative of this power series here. It's the derivative of this power series here. Now, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to take a second, I'd like to kind of describe how we do this, how we take the derivative of this summation. I want to do it kind of at the bottom of the screen here so I'm not jumbling up too much at the top. So I want to have a discussion about, I want to have a discussion about the summation n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. I want to talk about what happens when we take that derivative. Okay. So remember that, that if I were to expand this, if I plug 0 into this, that's x to the 0, which is 1. If I plug 1 in, it's x, and it goes to x squared, x cubed, and so on, right? Uh, that's, all poly, that's all power series is. It's just a, it's a polynomial, an uh, infinite polynomial. Now, if I were to take the derivative of this, if I were to take the derivative of these terms, I'd be left with the derivative of 1 is 0, 
derivative of x is 1, and then 2x, and then 3x squared, and then so on. I mean, it's just like taking the derivative of a, of a polynomial. Okay. Well, since I'm able to just take the derivative of these using our um, polynomial rule, then I can take the derivative of the general term in the same exact way. So this will be the summation. Power rule just says bring in down x and then to the n minus 1 power. That's my new pattern. And you can even verify if I plug, say, um, uh, well, if I plug 0 into this, I would end up getting, well, I'll get back to that argument in a second. But anyway, because I took the, the derivative of, of just a polynomial, the pattern can also be taken the derivative the same way. Well, one thing that I want to clarify here, one thing that happens when you take the derivative of a power series is that this constant at the very beginning goes to zero. It goes away. So instead of starting off at the zero term now, since the zero just goes bye-bye, we're actually starting off at n equals one. So what happens when you take the derivative of a, poly, of a, of a power series is actually it also gets rid of the very first term. It gets rid of the constant and the the constant now starts at the, at the first term instead of the zero term. This actually eliminates the first term, so we go to n equals 1 instead of n equals 0. So that's what happens when we take the derivative of a power series. We, uh, we lose a term. Okay. But the thing is, is power series are supposed to be represented as n equals 0. It's just how they like to be written because our zero term is supposed to be our, our constant. So if we lose a term, we're going to have to adjust this answer a little bit. And I want to clarify this for a second. That, um, that with, with a power series, if I take the derivative, right, if I take the derivative of x to the n, I get n x to the n minus 1, right? What that does is it takes me, again, to n equals 1 to infinity. Okay. And if I want to adjust back to n equals 0, since I'm going backwards, I adjust my pattern by moving forward a little bit. So if I go backwards 1, I'm going to substitute in n with n plus 1. Okay. That will, that will equate out the, the formula. It will, it will adjust everything right. Okay. So instead of n and n minus 1, I'm going to have n plus 1 and x to the n plus 1 minus 1 power. Which would simplify to the summation n equals 0 to infinity of n plus 1, x, and then nth power. This summation and the summation up here are equivalent. Like if I plug 0 into that, that's 0 plus 1, x to the 0, which gives me 1. Okay, So I just now made this n equals 1 term now my n equals 0 term. That's all. Yeah. So that's just what happens when you take the derivative. You lose the first term, so to go back to the 0 term, you do n plus 1 instead of n. So let's, let's look what happens now. So we know that this derivative is going to be 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Okay? And now we understand how to take the derivative of this power series. The derivative, since it's just a polynomial, is going to be the same derivative as always. It's just now we lose a term, so we, a term, so we go to 1. And we know the derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1 power. It's just power rule. But we want to go back to the correct form for a power series. We want to go back to n equals 0. So I'm going to say summation n equals 0 to infinity. And instead of n, I'm going to do n plus 1. Okay. Which, if I reduce that down a little bit, I am left with the summation n equals 0 to infinity of n plus 1x to the nth power. That's my answer. 
So that is 1 over 1 minus x squared being represented as a power series. So the whole explanation down here, again, was just to explain how we take the derivative of a power series. It's just taking the derivative of a polynomial. Which is that right there? Yay! Let's try another example. Okay. X over 1 plus 4x squared. So I want us to look at this problem, and I want us to be thinking to ourselves, okay, it looks similar to the form of a power series. It looks similar, like, like the squared is throwing me off. And if you ever see a squared, I want you to be thinking, okay, if I take the derivative of something in the correct form of a power series, it's going to give me this. Uh, the goal is to have, like, the inside 1 plus 4x only. The goal is to, is to have this. Let's start with this. Let's start with 1 over 1 plus 4x. Okay? Which is, is close to the form that I want for power series. Technically, this power series is, is going to be 1 over 1 minus something. So we can say minus negative 4x. But the goal is, is I, I can take the power series of this. The goal is to have that. Okay? The goal is to have that. So remember what I said. If I take the derivative of 1 over 1 plus 4x, the idea is to get back to this right here. So, so what happens if I were to say, take the derivative, just like I did in the last problem, of 1 over 1 plus 4x, or 1 plus 4x to the negative first. If I take that derivative, what I get is my power, my power rule and chain rule, negative 1 plus 4x to the negative second times the derivative of the inside, which is um, 4. So this ends up being negative 4 over 1 plus 4x to the second power. So taking the derivative like I did in the last example, it doesn't give me exactly what I need, which is kind of frustrating. So what, like how, how can I make these two equivalent? Like taking the derivative is not... It's not an identity. They're not equi equivalent to each other. But what are they off by? Okay. Well, we still need an x on top. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by an extra x. And I don't have a negative 4 on top. So let's multiply by negative 1 4 to cross those out. Okay. If I did that, then I'm left back with what I started with. Um, x over um, 1 plus 4x squared. So the whole point of this conversation is to say, like, what can I look like? What can I like make? What equation can I make that has this in it, that has that in it, that I'm going to be able to represent as a power series? So all of this, all of this, pretty much is, is for me to say that x over one plus four x to the second power is equivalent to the derivative of one over one plus four x as long as I'm multiplied by x over negative 4. So this quantity and this quantity are equivalent. So if I can find the power series of this quantity here, then that's the same thing as finding the power series of this quantity here. So let's start here. Um, game plan. Let's try game plan. The game plan is because I know that this quantity right here is equivalent to this quantity, I am going to try to find the power series of this. Okay, so I'm going to try to find the power series of the derivative d over dx of um, uh, 1 over 1. Instead of plus 4x, I'm going to say minus negative 4x, because that's the correct form of power series, multiplied by x over negative 4. Okay. So I'm going to write that out exactly as I need to in terms of power series. So this is the same thing as saying the derivative of, I know I can represent this as a power series. Okay. This is a power series, is the summation um, 
n equals zero to infinity of negative four x to the um, um, nth power. Okay, so I'm taking the derivative of that. And then we're also going to be multiplying by negative x over four. So there's the power. I mean, that's it. That's the power series. Woohoo! But we got to simplify it down a little bit. Okay? Got to simplify it down just a little bit. So before I take the derivative, I like to simplify down this quantity first so I can do a simple power rule. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this as d over dx times summation n equals 0 to infinity. And I'm just going to distribute the n like I'm used to. And if I had negative 4, I also I want to actually make this negative 1 times 4 times x. So what I want to do is I want to say negative 1 to the n, positive 4 to the n, bless me, and then x to the n. Okay? Um, those all would end up simplifying to negative 4x to the n, all multiplied by negative x over 4. The reason we like to do that with power series and, and summations and stuff is because negative 1 to the n means it's alternating. We always let it separate that negative. All right, but the cool thing is, is like, regardless, this is just a number. This is just my c sub n, and this is just my power series, okay? So when I actually take the derivative, just treat this as a constant. The derivative is just going to be the power rule with x to the n. So what we're going to have is the derivative is equal to, so I'm going to get rid of the derivative symbol, n equals 1 now because we're losing the first constant. And because negative 1 to the n and 4 to the n are just constants, all I worry about is this, this value right here. So power rule says bring the n down, so I'm multiply by n, and then it's going to go from a power of n to n minus 1. We still have that negative x over 4. Okay? All right, well, here's the cool thing, and here's the reason that I really split up that negative 1 and that 4. Is because we're really close to being done here. Uh, let's not go back to n equals 0 yet. I want to first bring this negative x over 4 into the summation. Okay? The idea is we want to have a power series, so I don't want to have a mul being multiplied by negative x over 4. But the cool thing is, and I should be I should be writing this all the way down, remember that this ended up simplifying back to the original that I wanted, right? 1 plus 4x squared. Okay. So anyway, let me rewrite the summation. Okay. Negative x over 4 can be written as negative 1 to the first, 4 to the negative first, right? That would mean the 4 up above, and then x to the first. So the cool thing is, so I split that up and with the negative, with the 4 I brought to the top, and then x to the first. The cool thing is, is that multiplying, we're going to see that we got these three quantities inside the summation. So I got one more negative one, I got one less four, and I got one more x. So how do I, when I'm multiplying common bases together, how do I combine like terms? You add the powers, right? So I got negative one base, negative one base. So I got n power and one power. I can add those powers together. So how this simplifies is, this is going to be the summation, n equals one still, to infinity. Instead of negative one to the n, it's going to be negative one to the n plus one. And instead of four to the n, it's going to be four to the n minus one. We still have the n, that's fine. But instead of n to the uh, x to the n minus 1, that's going to be x to the n minus 1 plus 1, or just um, n. Okay. Now, we're super, 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 super close to being done, so I'm going to go ahead and even put x over 1 plus 4x squared is equal to. The only thing that we have to do to adjust at the very end, I always wait to the very end to do this, is substitute back in n equals 0. So this is going to be the summation 
n equals 0 to infinity. And remember how we substitute that back in. Instead of saying n, we're going to say n plus 1. So this is negative 1. Instead of n, it's n plus 1 plus 1 times 4. Instead of n, it's n plus 1 minus 1 times n. Instead of n, it's n plus 1. And then x to the n power, but instead of n, it's n plus 1. There you have it. That is the power series that represents it. That is the power series that is represented by it. So, just, uh, and you can circle it right there, but the OCD is killing me here. I'm going to simplify those powers down, and then we will be done with this problem. So that's negative 1 to the n plus 2 power times 4 to the nth power times n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 power. Woohoo! So that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I think I think like what the thing is 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 like once we start taking the derivative and like doing this step here down, this is going to become so procedural. It's just it's going to be pretty easy. The the idea, the, the game plan, the hard part I think is sometimes maybe rewriting that quantity from the very beginning. But what I want us to keep in mind and what I want us to notice between these last two problems is is if you have squared in a quantity that's in this form right here, the idea is to start with taking the derivative of the single term. Start with taking the derivative of 1 over 1 plus whatever the denominator is. Okay? If I take the derivative of that, you're going to get some quantity. You may have to adjust it a little bit. Okay? You may have to multiply by something to adjust it a little bit. But the idea is that we are able to rewrite that starting function as the derivative of something. Okay? All right, I've got a couple more. i got one, two, three more. I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to split this video up a little bit, and I'm going to keep going. The next one is to do the ln of 1 plus x. Okay, the idea, again, is to rewrite this as an equivalent form to where we have 1 over 1 minus some quantity. So now what is something that is equivalent to ln of 1 plus x that's in this form? Well, what about the derivative of ln of 1 plus x? What is the derivative of ln of 1 plus x? Well, it's 1 over 1 plus x, and that's it. And which is the dang form that I need right there. Okay? So, with that in mind... Isn't the ln of 1 plus x, isn't this equivalent to the integral of 1 over 1 plus x? This right here and this right here are equivalent forms. And I am able to take the power series of 1 over 1 plus x. Hmm? So a little side note here. We, we talked about how to take the derivative of power series. I want to take a little side note here for a second. I'm talking about how to take the integral of a power series. Okay. So, all right. So let's 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 set this let's set this bad boy up real quick. Like like I am able to take the integral of one over one plus x, right? I'm also able to represent one over one plus x as a power series, right? So the integral of 1 over 1 minus negative x, and I guess in the correct form, is equivalent to the integral of, and I know how to represent this as a power series, right? The integration as a power series um, is going to be the summation n equals 0 to infinity of negative x to the n power, which I'm going to go ahead and say is negative 1 to the n, x to the n. That's the power series representation. Okay? So there's a little side, okay, well, I kind of want to do this side note over here. Let's talk about what happens when I integrate the summation n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the n. Well, remember that negative 1 x to the n, that we, we, like, we know how that expands. We know if I plug 0 into that, um, I, get, I get positive 1 and, and, and I get x x squared, x cubed, I get all those. The negative one just means it's alternating. 
So it goes minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, so on. Integrating this is the same thing as like doing the derivative. I can just integrate doing my uh, my integration rules, right? This is going to be the integral of n equals zero to infinity of negative one x to the so we add one to the power and then we divide by that new power. That's the that's the integral rule for, for polynomials, right? And and think about what's happening right here, right? This is like my zeroth term, first term, second term, third term, and so forth. If I integrate, that becomes x minus one half x squared plus one third x cubed, blah, 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 blah. And then remember, integration has a plus c. So the idea is, is yes, this, this, uh, this constant becomes a linear. But we never lose a term to integration like we do with derivatives. The derivative of the constant goes away. But the integral is going to have that plus c at the end. So technically, we never lose any terms. So because of that, with integration, it's actually really nice. We don't lose a value of n with integration. Okay, so I don't have to adjust n equals zero at all in this problem. That's what I love about it, integration. So we can solve this actually pretty quick. The integral of 1 over 1 minus whatever, we already know that that is the ln absolute value of 1 plus x, which is where I started. And though, remember, this is a generic derivative. So what I want us to do is I want us to put plus c. And, and since we're integrating, you can put plus c on either side. We're going to put it on this side. And this integration, we already know, is still the summation n equals 0. We don't lose a term to infinity. It's still negative 1 to the n. That's like my c sub n, so that doesn't change. And now it goes x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. That's just the antiderivative. Okay. And that's it. And really, the only other thing we got to do is just solve for c. And we solve for c by plugging in points. Um, I usually try to typically plug in the point like zero, and nine times out of ten, the c value itself is going to be zero, so I don't want to be stressed about that. But like if I let x equal zero in this case, the ln of absolute value of one plus c equals the summation n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n um, uh, zero to the n plus one over n plus one power. Zero to any power is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So this right becomes zero. Okay. So ln of one is also zero. So that must mean that c is zero. So like I said, that means letting letting x equal zero gets rid of the entire power series on the right side because zero times anything is zero. So it's an easy way to solve for c. So in this case, the ln absolute value of one plus x is equal to the summation n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 power. Woohoo! That is the power series representation of ln of 1 plus x. Okay. All right, and then I got one more I want to do with you, technically two more. I got this one and this one. But I think I want to hold off on, on, um, on example three. I want to do that in class with you. It's a little bit unique of a problem. So we're just going to end with B. And I'll shut up. Determine a power series for tan inverse. Okay. Again, the idea is I, I would like to have something equivalent to tan inverse in the form 1 over 1 minus something. Okay. Well, what do we know about tan inverse? We know its derivative. We know the derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So then that means, uh, so that means that tan inverse of x is equivalent to the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right? We know that integral is equal to tan inverse of x plus c. 
And isn't 1 over 1 plus x squared, isn't that in a form that I can represent as a power series? Isn't it in this form here? Okay. So we're going to use that identity. We're going to use the fact that, that, uh, that if I got 1 over 1, we'll say minus negative x squared, that if I take the integral of that, okay, it's equivalent to tan inverse plus c. So if I find its power series, then it's the same as finding the power series of tan inverse, right? So this integral is, is, is equivalent to the integral of um, summation n equals 0 to infinity. I know that this, as a power series, is going to be, uh, the negative is going to be negative 1 to the n. And then we got x squared to the n. So let's see what happens whenever I uh, integrate this. The integration of 1 over 1 um, plus x squared is, is tan inverse of x. And I'll go ahead and put the plus c here. The integration, um, uh, and I, I, we can go ahead and say that this is the same thing as you know, x to the 2n, right? But the integration is going to be summation n equals 0 to infinity. Negative 1 to the n is just a constant. So this becomes x to the 2n plus 1 whenever I add 1 to the power. And then divide by the new power. Okay. And that's it. So the only thing we got to do is solve for c. Um, so, I, you know, I always let x equal 0. I think that's the best way to, to do this. Because plugging 0 in on the right side crosses out the whole thing. And then uh, the tan inverse of 0, okay, so tan inverse of 0 is actually 0 itself, so C ends up equaling 0. So my final answer is tan inverse of x equals the summation n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 as the base. The power series representation of tan inverse of x is that. All right, I've gone well over my time. You've been super patient with me, so I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. We will uh, skim over these notes together and pick up right here together, being able to, uh, to take an expanded power series and find its derivative. So this, that's a fun problem to, to do, so we'll do it together. All right, good job, guys. Thank you.